Welcome back to the Law of One series, episode 10. Since our last episode was on fourth density consciousness, we're going to tackle another major teaching today from the Law of One that relates to this, and that is the harvest. Now, I think that of all the concepts taught in the Law of One, the harvest is probably the most misunderstood and misused one of all. And just by the name alone, you can sort of see why this is the case because it kind of gives off this impression of an end times rapture event of souls being harvested to the afterlife. And as you'll see from this episode, this is not at all the case. Just like the term wanderer, when Ra was being channeled through Karla, they were simply choosing what they believed were the most accurate words available in our language to communicate their points. These are not words that higher density beings use to refer to these concepts because higher density beings don't even use verbal language. So because concepts carry a lot of distortions, we seem to project onto Ra what we think that they're saying. So in order to clear up this mess, let's talk about what the harvest really is and look at some passages from the Ra material. To those who are new to the Ra material, the term harvest is sometimes misconstrued to mean some kind of extraterrestrial harvesting of humans. But all that the term harvest represents is a planetary cycle in which the planet itself becomes magnetized to the next density level in the vibration of light. As Ra explains, the photon actually increases its vibration at each density level. The reason for this is that as consciousness evolves, it is able to absorb more light which means more information, which also means more evolution. So the density level of light that the planet has access to always matches the overall readout of the state of consciousness of the planet. The two are one. So Ra explains that every planet in the universe is essentially a ticking clock. Planets move through cycles or stages as they age. And this works mechanically in accordance with the planet's orbit around the sun. Each density level has a different cycle of time than the previous. So I'm going to explain the harvest from the perspective of the planet as a living entity, which I believe will then help us to understand how it works on the human level as well. So the planet begins in first density, this density level taking around 2 billion years. The first density correlates to the red ray or root chakra. Once the rate of vibration increases enough, Earth moves into the second density. This corresponds to the orange ray or sacral chakra. After another few billion years, consciousness moves into the third density, where the rate of vibration of light increases enough to allow consciousness to become self-aware. Ra says that the planetary cycles for third density in total is 75,000 years. And this consists of three separate 25,000 year cycles. These 25,000 year cycles are the precession of Earth's rotational axis. The direction in the sky to which the Earth's axis points goes around in a big circle, each one taking 25,000 years to complete. So in other words, this precession changes the North Star as seen from our planet. Third density's time period is incredibly short compared to all other densities because it is simply the density in which the planet chooses which polarity it will be magnetized to. So from the lifespan of the planet, this choosing period happens in the snapping of a finger. But in our lifespan, 25,000 years is a very long time. Each time this procession completes, like the gear hands on a clock, the Earth is eligible for graduation into the next density level. This graduation is what Ra calls the harvest. In session 9, Ra says, This intelligent energy offers a type of clock. The cycles move as precisely as a clock strikes your hour. Thus, the gateway from intelligent energy to intelligent infinity opens regardless of circumstance on the striking of the hour. So the Earth becomes harvested to the next density level if the Earth has polarized positively or negatively within that 25,000 year cycle. As we know from previous episodes, 
The positive polarity requires 51% or greater, and the negative polarity requires 95% or greater. So if the Earth is still within that 6 to 50% mark when the harvest cycle comes around, then it will complete another 25,000 year cycle. And Ross says that after three of these cycles, the Earth is harvested into the next density level, regardless of whether or not the polarity has been chosen yet. So whichever polarity is greater in strength is what the planet becomes in the fourth density. So if the planet is closer to being positively polarized, then it would become a very weak, positively polarized fourth density planet. And this is sort of how Ra describes the harvest on our planet. The Earth ended its 75,000 year total third density time period in the year 2012. Ra says that we were eligible for a positive fourth density harvest, but just barely. And so this is where Ra will explain why there have been so many wanderers incarnating onto our planet over the last few decades to help raise the planetary vibration into a positive one in time for the harvest. And apparently, it worked. So, souls have the right to choose this act of service if they wish to help a planet that's sort of struggling in that middle zone as the harvest is approaching. So, how does this planetary cycle affect us? The harvest is a harvesting of all of our spiritual progress up to that point. And if you remember the concept of the Logos, we are all one with Mother Earth. Her vibration is ours and vice versa. So what determines the planetary vibration is the sum total of the collective consciousness on Earth. So we are directly responsible for allowing Mother Earth to graduate because again, we are the Earth. It's not like Mother Earth can say, well, I'm ready to become fourth density positive, but all the cells in my body aren't. You are the cells in your body. So what happens to them happens to you. So when the harvest cycle comes around, only those souls who have positively or negatively polarized will be eligible to select a fourth density incarnation in their next lifetime. Ross says that those who lie in that middle ground of 6 to 50% We'll just have to repeat another third density cycle. So nobody loses in this game. You just start the level over, kind of like a video game. You can't actually lose the game. You just keep playing it until you figure it out and beat it. Some people beat the game really quickly and others take a long time. But ultimately, neither one is better or worse than the other. It simply offers the creator a different experience of itself. The density levels also represent certain lessons that consciousness must learn before it can enter the next vibration of experience. In second density, the lesson is to learn self-awareness, which is the property of third density. In third density, the lesson is to learn love and oneness, which is the property of fourth density. So each density is pulled by the spiritual gravity of the following density level, and this pulling toward the light is what allows a soul to eventually be harvested. Imagine walking up a staircase made of light, and each step is a little bit brighter than the previous one. We continue walking up this staircase of light until the light is too blinding and we have to stop. Our soul is only harvested once our physical body dies. So if, when the harvest comes around, you have not stepped onto the first fourth density stair yet, you must repeat the third density again. And if you miss the fourth density harvest on Earth, you will have to repeat third density on a planet somewhere else. If you are already walking on the fourth density stairs, the Creator knows that your soul is ready for a fourth density incarnation. In session 6, Ra says, The spirit complex of each harvested entity moves along the line of light, until the light grows too glaring, at which time the entity stops. This entity may have barely reached third density or may be very, very close to the ending of the third density. Nevertheless, those who fall within this octave of intensifying light love then experience a major cycle of that density. 
The choice between the polarities is the whole point of third density, and the primary factor required for graduation in the harvest. All will be harvested, but not all will graduate. Some will repeat third density over again. Ra says that the choice in third density is the work of but a moment, yet is the axis upon which the creation turns. In session 71, Ra says, The connection between polarization and harvestability is most important in the third density harvest. In this density, an increase in the serving of others or the serving of self will almost inevitably increase the ability of an entity to enjoy a higher intensity of light. Thus, in this density, we must say it is hardly possible to polarize without increasing in harvestability. So the way that polarization works is very simple. Any action that you take that has the well-being of others in mind is polarizing you towards the positive polarity. Any action you take that has service to self in mind at the exclusion of others is polarizing you towards the negative polarity. But that being said, you're not just going to accidentally wind up polarizing positive or negative. Ross says it takes real awareness of the game you're playing to make a choice and commit to either path. Otherwise, you're going to remain in limbo in that median range of 6 to 50% and never be eligible for graduation. Now, Ra also explains that within each density are seven sub-densities, within which there are seven sub-sub-densities, and so on for infinity. So when you graduate to fourth density, you're going to be placed in the exact sub-density level of where you left off in your previous incarnation. So if you make use of your catalyst here and you begin polarizing your consciousness strongly into the love and light of fourth density, then you're going to be placed in a higher sub-density level than somebody who barely did enough work to graduate. So in essence, no spiritual work is ever lost. And this sort of touches on another main question that gets asked around the topic of the harvest, which usually goes something like this. What's the point of doing all this work on myself if all I gotta do is be eligible to graduate and I'll wind up in the fourth density with everybody else. <laughs> this is sort of akin to the Christian belief that doing personal work on yourself is basically useless because, hey, you've confessed Jesus as Lord, so you've got your one-way ticket to heaven. And in heaven, you're not going to have any of these issues anymore. So why go through all the trouble of forgiving people and doing shadow work? You may think that's funny, but I've had that exact conversation with a Christian friend of mine on more than one occasion. Try and imagine Hitler confessing Christ as Lord right before his last breath, and then he winds up in heaven with the rest of us, and we're like, Yo, dude, what are you doing here? And he's like, Hey, I confessed Christ as Lord at the last second, so I'm in with you guys now. How fair would that be? Yes, Hitler would be forgiven, of course, but that doesn't mean he doesn't have a lot of karma to work out. So the answer to that question is, we live in a perfectly just and fair universe. So students who score an A plus on the test are going to receive a greater reward than those who just barely pass with a C minus. One gets a college scholarship, the other has to go to a junior college. So for example, if you just do barely enough work to graduate into fourth density, well, that's awesome, but your next incarnation will probably be on a planet that's just barely entered fourth density, similar to ours. But if you decide to make use of your catalyst and polarize as much as you can in this lifetime, then your next incarnation will probably be on Earth a few thousand years from now when we're much more advanced into fourth density love. So there's always incentive to put in the work here and now because third density is the ultimate catalyst for spiritual evolution. That's why it's so difficult here compared to other density levels. The risk is high, but the reward is also high. So in conclusion, the point that I want to really drive home is that there is nothing more important that you can do in this lifetime 
than working on yourself, accepting yourself, forgiving yourself, and knowing yourself are the most important things you can do in this lifetime. Not only for your own benefit, but for the benefit of the planet as a whole. When you increase your vibration, you increase the planetary vibration. When the planetary vibration increases, it creates a more conducive atmosphere for other people to wake up. We as a planetary civilization are in the process of waking up to our oneness right now. Planet Earth is already in the fourth density, but there's many people on our planet that are still trying to catch up with her. And the way that we help them do that is that we make our choice here and now. It is the easiest thing in the world to remain in that 6 to 50% margin, but it requires an understanding of the game you're playing to choose between the two. So if you choose to polarize negatively into the fourth density, then you're going to be harvested into a fourth density negative planet somewhere else. But Ross says that those who graduate on Earth into fourth density positive almost always choose to reincarnate into fourth density on the same planet. And what this means is that we are truly all in this together. At some point in our fourth density, all of our minds will be joined as one. This is what Ra calls a social memory complex. And Ra explains that the fourth density is a kind of heaven compared to the third density, where there is no more suffering or disharmony. And the entire cycle of fourth density lasts for about 30 million years, which means that each harvest cycle is about 10 million years. So when you compare that to the third density, you realize that we truly are here for just a flash of a moment, but the choices we make here dictate the evolutionary destiny of our souls. So those of us who choose the path of love will experience a completely different world than the one we see today when we reincarnate here. And so we are bringing heaven to earth right now as we choose to stand for love, for righteousness, and peace. There's a famous passage in the book of Matthew chapter 9 where Jesus is speaking to his disciples about spreading the gospel. And he says to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his field. In another passage in John chapter 4, Jesus says, Don't you all have a saying? It's still four months until the harvest. But I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are already ripe for the harvest. We are those workers being sent out into the field. Our planetary cycle of third density ended in 2012, which means that every third density soul born on this planet will be harvested one way or another when their incarnation here is over which means there's never been a better time for spiritual work on our planet than right now. By expanding our vibration and radiating love and light to all those we come in contact with, we can help countless numbers of people not have to repeat third density over again. There's nothing wrong if they do, of course, but why should they have to if there's an opportunity for graduation right now? This is the best way that we can be of service and polarize our own souls at the same time. There are so few people aware of the pivotal shift happening in Earth's history right now. But more people are waking up to this shift every single day. Ra warned us that our transition into fourth density was going to be a difficult one. And our world is reflecting this change right now. There is total chaos and total disharmony. But there's also the questioning of power and standing up to injustice. The winds of change are blowing strong and each and every one of us came here to experience the shift that's happening right now. To which I will simply say, wake up workers, the fields are white for the harvest. <laughs>